Hey, what's up, Team Building Podcast listeners? Super jacked about this episode today. I'm interviewing an old friend. I actually went into my email to see the last time I had, had email correspondence with this gentleman, the first time, I should say. And it was back in 2013, he was introduced to me by a, a good friend and top agent, Chris Waters. Um, John Pike is our guest today, and he is an expert at interviewing talent and helping you make sure you make the right hiring decisions. And it couldn't come at a better time with the topic of July with Elite Real Estate Systems being hiring direct recruits to free your time so you can focus on highest income producing activities. John's going to help us dive deep into this. And then we're also going to discuss the dysfunction of a lot of teams, including my own, where we have tons of, we have an abundance of leads, we have the systems, we have the processes in place. We simply can't find the talent willing to work. Where are the people at? John Pike, welcome right. to the show. Thank you, man. Pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. So I guess start off, um, share with the audience members some of your successes and kind of what led you to this, this place. And also, John and I uh, got to spend some time together in Tulum, Mexico last year. We're both in the Multipliers Mastermind, which helps uh, people learn how to wholesale, invest in single family, multifamily, commercial, and that sort of thing. Absolutely. So the, the brief uh, quick story is I've been doing this for the last 10 years. I've uh, assessed, hired, and helped train over a million people in the real estate industry. Uh, nobody would have really any credibility if you didn't have a best-selling book. So I went ahead and took the initiative to do so, not because I really wanted to, just because it's an extra uh, check mark in terms of credibility and authenticity. So this went number one in six different countries, how the top 1% of realtors build world-class teams. Um, Real quick, if you're, not, if you're listening, just so you guys know, there is an option to watch on YouTube. Um, if you just search the Team Building Podcast on there, if you ever want to know a specific guest we interview, you can also just go Team Building Podcast and add a guest name for that episode to pop up. John just shared a cover of his book. It looked like a beautiful cover. Would love you to email me a copy, John. I promise I'll read it if you send it. I didn't know you had written a book. That's awesome. That's very important. Okay. Well, even better than that, if anybody of the listeners want a copy of this, all they have to do is send me an email and I will send them a PDF uh, right away. Uh, so happy to share this. At content. no cost. At absolutely no Look cost. My that. gift to all your listeners. Yeah. What's your email address? It's john, J-O-H-N, at the talentgenius.com john at the talentgenius.com would love to send everybody a copy cool that's a thank thank you so much that's a great gift absolutely my pleasure so um you know 50 percent of our clients are in the wall street journal top 250 real trends um and you know a lot of them didn't start there right like for example fred and tammy Holmes in dayton ohio average home is, is around 125,000. they started at about 100 um, this year they're going to, they're going to break over 500. They had their, their highest quarter, best first quarter, uh, in history, wow. uh, this year. Uh, you take a look at a guy named Jeff Cook, master marketer out of Charleston, South Carolina. He was one of my very first clients. Um, we took him from 10 people and 300 sides to now he's got seven offices and he's going to do over 1500 this year. He was ranked Holy number cow. 10 last year. That's impressive. Um, yeah. So, I mean, we, we just been doing a tremendous job. So at the end of the day, let me really tell you what the, what, where the secret sauce is. Why are we able to quadruple every client's hiring effectiveness or success rate that we are working with? Let me just show you a visual because, you know, picture is kind of worth a thousand words. Right here, you see a picture of an iceberg, right? Mm -hmm. So you see that really only 12% of, the, of, the, of what you see is above the surface. That's a person's personality if you're relating this to an interview, okay? Things like warmth, how outgoing, how much urgency do they have, okay? Now, what we know from research is that 100 years of research has revealed if you are using any type of personality instrument for hiring, it's only marginally better than just looking at a person's resume and making a decision, a hiring decision based on looking at a resume. So it's a one-dimensional tool. It's woefully inadequate. It's great for communication skills and team building. I use it extensively, but as this shows you, it's only the tip of the iceberg. Right. What we really have to be able to know and access is the bottom 88%, okay? Which is um, things like persistence, drive, initiative, handling rejection, the ability to quickly and easily develop trust and rapport with people. And let me tell you, those are things that you really cannot teach, something that someone will not be able to learn. Now, let me just give you a little bit of inkling in terms of my background and why this is so important. So I, at one time, worked for the largest sales training company in the world. 
Okay, the old Xerox learning systems company. At one point, they were trusted by 85% of the Fortune 500. Why? Least risk vendor, 800 pound gorilla. Nobody ever got fired for using their training program. But here's what I discovered my second year into, the pro, into working for them. After the training, the high performers continue to be high performers and the low performers continue to be low performers. So simply put, there was no direct causal link between the training and an increase in sales. So all these broker owners listening today, if you have people that are mediocre and average, they're always basically going to perform at that level regardless of what you do. You can be assured of it. This is 3 million people that I've helped train um, in the sales industry overall. Okay? So you're saying if it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, it's probably a duck. Absolutely. Now let like me a, share. A lot of people already disagree. I'm sure a, a lot of our listeners, just like I, I myself want to challenge everything our guests say. Sure. Uh, I, I'll speak to my experience over the last eight years. Yep. I've experienced the exact same thing. The mm -hmm. only time where it's not the same is if the person was in an environment prior to joining my team that I would call toxic, where right. they weren't able or allowed right. to truly reach their full potential. But Absolutely. I would say within six months, if someone hasn't done that, they right. are what they're going to be. I right. have not seen someone come onto my team and wait six months before becoming great. Usually right. they've become they start to become great right away and plug in. If they haven't plugged in, they're probably never going to plug in. And I think that that's the point that you're making. And before anyone gets nervous and starts firing people, I have created a strategy to build a team with people like that. It's okay to have a $2 million producer and it's sure. way better to have a $10 million producer. Right. You build an organization that can have both types. I Absolutely. feel like it will last a lot longer. Absolutely. So here's a couple of other proof points. In an economic downturn, one of the very first things business owners and senior executives do is they, they cut this traditional training. If it worked, they double and triple down, you know, because, you know, they get better results, but that's simply not the case. The other thing is if somebody goes on a performance improvement plan, 99% of the time, the person ends up losing their job. They just simply, you're asking them to do something that they physically cannot do. Yep. So what I want to do is I want to explain the why, not just you know, give you the, the, the data point, but I want to explain the why. So here's the single greatest takeaway or thing that I have learned, the single greatest epiphany. I actually resigned from this company, even though I, in my first year, I sold more than anyone in the history of the company. I resigned. I went on this quest. I had an ethical dilemma or conscience, you know, crisis of conscience. How can I go and sell this training that's supposed to be the best in the industry to these senior executives, Fortune 500 executives, but I knew deep down it didn't work. So I went on this journey and let me just share and cut right to the chase in terms of what I learned. All salespeople are definitely not created equal. In the everything outside of real estate, 20% of the salespeople consistently sell 80% of the total sales revenue. And let me tell you this, they do it with less effort because it's a natural expression of who they are. They're kind of in their zone or in the element. In real estate, it's even more lopsided because of the amount of retirees and part-time people. So you actually have 5% doing 95%. Yep. So let me tell you what the main difference is, okay? This is crucial. What I have determined is that the main difference has to do with the hardwiring of someone's brain. Let me say this again. The neural pathways of how the brain are actually connected. So for example, in one of the, the assessments that I use, which is the most important of any assessment, bar none, has to do with the neural pathways of the brain. If you have low scores or lower scores in specific areas, what it means is, is that your brain does not see that clearly. It's sort of like bunny rabbit ear reception. There's a lot of distortion or a lot of snow, okay? So if we equate this to education, you, you know, either ourselves, for me, math was my Achilles heel. I'm terrible at math. I had to work four times as hard just to get an average grade, right? And uh, because I didn't see math very clearly, I, I had bunny rad, rabbit ear reception when it comes to math. Every other subject was pretty much in high definition. I saw it in vibrant, crystal clear which means it didn't take any effort. Sometimes I didn't even really have to study because I was in my element or in the zone. It's the same thing with sales, okay? And the same thing, this is the universal truth for every position, whether it's a transaction coordinator, listing manager, inside salesperson, doesn't matter. Director right. of operations, et cetera. It has to do with the hardwiring of the brain. So if the hardwiring of the brain, if they don't see something clearly that's, that's in the bottom part here, things like persistence, drive, initiative, handling, rejection, the ability to quickly and easily develop trust and rapport, et cetera, is basically game over. You really can't do much to move the needle. Okay. Let me give you a quick example. Before I started doing an extensive amount, almost exclusively in real estate, I worked with a company by the name of Furniture Land South. They had a seven-year sales slide, meaning their, their revenue was cut in half. I was the first consultant uh, that came in to help them. 
Well, they had a 50% sales turnover. I eliminated that. And, but what happened in the first 30 days I worked with them, we had a 48% increase in sales. We were the lead story on national television on CBS Evening News with Katie Couric. Here we are in 2010, the height of the recession, in the, the industry that's been hit the hardest in, the, in terms of the retail segment. All the competitors, with the exception of one, went out of business. And uh, we had a 48% increase in sales, right? What happened was is that the top 20% of the company that I taught the sales training to had a 60% increase in sales. The remaining 130 people had less than 10%, getting back to the hardwiring of the brain again. So in your experience, Jeff, what you're telling us is that if people are already predisposed, I call it the sales DNA. If they already have the sales DNA and you train someone that has the sales DNA, their sales are going to go vertical. Mm, right. if, they're, if they're compromised, okay, so the more that you compromise the scores, excuse me, of the assessment and you settle, the more the actual performance is also going to be compromised. So it's not that you don't invest in the people that are your B and C players, the people that are doing two and three million, because there's a place for them as long right. as they're not high maintenance, right. right? But your superstars are the ones, again, that have not okay, only the so right personality style. Let's get yeah. into the nuts and bolts. So I don't, yeah. know, I don't disagree with anything you said. That's been my experience. It's been right. what I've studied and it's been what I've heard other people say. So sure. now with this knowledge, how mm -hmm. do we as team leaders, you have people listening that haven't started their team yet. They have one or two agents. They right. might have one or two direct reports. Right. How do we go about picking the right people whose brains are wired the way we want them to be wired so that they'll grow and be successful? And the second point I'll make to have a two-tiered question here is do we always want the alpha, the high DI going back to the disc test? Um, I know that sometimes because there might be so much alpha in someone that they think they can do it on their own and then they end up leaving the organization. So right. is there a middle ground where we don't want the 5% that do 95%? We want like the, some of the 95% that are just below where those 5% are at, but not at the bottom of the tier? Those are all great questions. And I, I say that the, the answer to that is it depends. It depends on the, the, uh, the, the amount of the, the, uh, the, the age of the company. It depends on how many people you have currently. It depends on how many systems you have. See, the worst thing that I could possibly do is hire rock stars and help a company that is not, does not have the systems because what's going to happen? They're just going to resign. If you're not providing them with any leads, right, that's total futility. So a lot of times I'll tell a, a potential client, hey, you need another six months to finish up internally to kind of have, we, you yeah. have the systems and, and policies. We, we, and we talked about that a lot, creating that foundation. And obviously recruiting is at the, the spear uh, but all of the other things that go along with it, you have to have that foundation built. And, yeah. you know, with elite real estate systems, we talk about accountability coaches and lead yeah. generation, lead conversion training, CRMs, admin yeah. staff to take it from contract to close. So to right. your point, if you bring on A players, but you don't have an A foundation, those yeah. A players are going to want to move on. And then it hurts my reputation and credibility because so the, I simply just, you know, reputation is too important. I simply won't engage unless the client is ready, unless everything is kind of set sure. up already so um so really timing is everything right timing is really everything uh you know when you look at high d's high d's are typically your listing agents and people that are uh, your isas they are not your buyer agents they're too impatient yep. so it depends on the actual position or role that you're looking to recruit and when you want to do it okay so most of the people that i'm working with are crushing it because of a concept called specialization so they, most of them have inside salespeople that are doing a lot of the lead scrubbing and setting of the appointments. And then the people that are phenomenal face-to-face -face were maximizing their amount of selling time instead of you know, being bogged down with minutia and having to qualify a lot. They're the rainmakers that are kind of going out and making it happen and closing the deals quickly, right? Mm. And, uh, and so that's something that, that needs to be considered as well. Um, so... Yeah, good, good, uh, definitely good point as it how, relates to that. How about one or two strategies or I guess patterns that you've seen over all of these interviews, millions of interviews yep. to show that someone's a great fit and to show yep. that someone's an awful fit? Are there any so, like simple tells? They might not work every time, but yep. just some quick tells that you could share with our audience? Sure. Here's probably one of the single most important takeaways that you could, you could learn from me today. And it's this, you've heard of the 2080 rule, right? Almost every single company out there bases their uh, employment decision, 80% of their employment decision on the face-to-face -face interview. It's totally the wrong way because we, it's a disaster. Here we are with all the technology and that we have and we, you know, the, the success rate we have with hiring is abysmal. So here's what I would submit to you. 80% of your hiring decision 
is based on the quality of the assessment results, the time-tested proven analytics, okay? Only 20% is based on the actual interview. Things like, do they fit your culture, right? Are they a good fit with your values? Do you see yourself interacting with them and them with the rest of your team members in a fashion that's going to be really you know, productive, right? Mm -hmm. So that's 80% based on the assessment tool and the results and how close it mirrors the top 10% and 20% is the actual interview. So I submit to you, so many team, team leaders and broker owners are wasting phenomenal amount of time. And in the first five minutes, they know, oh my gosh, how can I cut this short but not be rude? Because mm -hmm. this person is absolutely not the right person. We are going to eliminate 90% of that problem from taking place. No one has any right to sit in front of you unless they have been screened appropriately, right. unless we know they have the right personality style, the right motivation and drive, and most important of all, the right hardwiring or innate talent. So that's the biggest breakthrough. The focus is on how can I do better in an interview? That's the wrong focus, and it's never going to yield you the quadrupling of your hiring success rate. Okay? It doesn't matter if you ask them better questions. Right? That's, not the, that's not where the secret resides. The secret resides in, is in the quality of the person. Okay. Not if you're asking them the right questions, because especially today with the internet, they can Google a lot of interview sure. questions and they can rehearse and they can tell you all the things that you want to hear. In right. fact, if they're, if they're already licensed, how important is their past record in sales? I would say it's about 50, 50. You have to consider where they're coming from, what type of support they had, what kind of systems, what kind of leads, those types of things. You could take somebody maybe that's doing only two or 3 million with a team in your city but give them all the systems and support and training that you have, and they may yeah. be able to do 10 million, yeah. okay? So a way to accelerate your success for sure is to, uh, is to try to hire and to recruit existing agents, licensed agents, because we know the learning curve and oh, all yeah. that has to take place and the, the time that it takes between you know, get, closing your first deal and getting paid. Yep. 100 I hours mean, is what I say to get someone to that it, first deal. Exactly, so we did this with West Madden, Wes Madden's been a, a long-term client of mine, great person, good friend. Yep. And last year, using this strategy of only going after known successful licensed agents instead of unlicensed, he was able to double the size of his team and it added over $200 million to his sales top line. $200 oh million. That's amazing. Yep, absolutely. So before, for, about the, for the last nine years, I've been working almost exclusively finding great sales talent and then they would have to get licensed and then there's you know that that right. window of time but now we're actually helping recruit licensed agents so talk everyone through the process so like right now my team's at about 40 agents i myself would like to be sitting around 100 mm -hmm. um, that's what we've been working towards for quite some time all my agents are getting way too many leads the average um, agent on my team averages like 50 to 60 leads a month and the number i'd like to see is about 30 leads a month per agent willing okay. to work those leads Right. So our bottleneck, surprisingly to me, because I always thought it'd be leads and or lead conversion, our bottleneck is agents that are willing okay. to work the leads that are willing to work, period. Right. So right. if someone were to hire you, what's the cost and then what's the process for finding the existing agent, um, interviewing the existing agent, disking or uh, doing your test on that individual agent, and then bringing them to that eight, to me or the recruiter to make the final decision or have that final interview? Sure. So there are a number of different programs that we run. Uh, let me explain the first one. It's using Wise Hire. Okay, the creator of Wise Hire is actually the same gentleman or individual that that uh, owns the rights to the assessments that I'm certified to use. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I used to work for him for a little while. Awesome. Great they, individual. Okay. They, by the way, were just at my event last week. I don't know if you knew that. They were one of our sponsors. I did see that on your webpage. Absolutely. Yeah. They're a great company, great people. So they have a fantastic tool. You can use it in a self-service capacity meaning that you get access to the disc and the values and they give you a number that tells you kind of where that's where they, they think that that individual ranks or scores in terms of the ideal person. The benefit of using an outside consultant is that third profile is something that you have to be certified in order to have access to. That's where uh, 78 out of the 85 things that we measure, 70, I'm sorry, 7, 11, um, 89 things that we measure, 78 of those 89 things that we measure is the third assessment, right? And so that's where really the, the measures the hardwiring of the brain, all those things that are below the surface that are innate. So what I have found is that a lot of, of my clients actually started using WiseHire, but they needed the extra outside help and assistance from somebody that's, you know, 
certified that's done this for a decade right. that can really provide them with the accuracy that they deserve. Wise to hire is a great tool, but having some outside assistance, it's, it's going to be uh, a lot better. Okay. So, so wise hire brings existing agents through the door. No. no. Okay. So good clarification. Um, wise, most agents are not, I repeat, are not looking online right. for a job. They're going through their sphere, you know, referrals, all those types of things. So it's the rare exception that I actually help anyone recruit a licensed agent online. It's, it's like a needle in a haystack to give you an analogy. So that is phenomenal for all the other positions for admin, for, you know, inside sales, but not for licensed agents. Okay. Um, and I've been doing, I've been, I've been their number one super user, you know, in terms of uh, a consultant that using Wisehire. If you want to go to, um, to, uh, to hiring or recruiting licensed agents, what we have been starting to do is we've been starting to do video email campaigns. So it depends on, you know, your MLS in terms of whether or not we have the data. Uh, but basically we get their phone number, their, their uh, email address and most important, and we drip on them. And we provide value to them and we let them know we invite them to you know team trainings we invite them to a career night uh you know those types of things now we've actually done this already with um, a client of mine by the name of jason bramblett and he has hired 15 people in his first 90 days now some of you may not want to scale that quickly and and, and be that aggressive i understand but even if you were to get one two or three people let me give you an example chad schwendeman exit realty up in Minnesota. I helped him hire this guy, no sales experience whatsoever. In fact, he was a former pastor. Hmm. It is one of the very best assessments I've ever seen. I said, you have to fast track this guy immediately. Hmm. In his very first year, he sold $14.5 million worth of real estate. Wow. That's in awesome. his second year, he sold over $25 million. And this is in a community of 50,000 and in the summer, because it's cottage country, it swells to over 200,000. The average price per home is around 240,000. So the guy's selling over wow, 100 it. homes in his second year with zero sales experience. That's Why? Awesome. Because he has the right combination of personality, motivation, and most important of all, he has those innate talents. You don't have to teach it. It's already there, right? right. So, uh, so walk, the walk me through again. You said you, you guys would strategically help the team place you know blog posts and videos and engage with their social media to let people know they're welcoming them and opening them to their offices for trainings and different events charity events whatever and right. when someone raises their hand and says yeah I'm, I'm interested i'd like to go through your recruiting process yep. then they hand them over to you you give them this test does that test do you do it with them or do you just send them a link and they go through and fill it out and can our audience members if they want to learn more about your processes do they get to be interview themselves and have you kind of analyze what their results are before doing it to others or using it. On Absolutely. Them. In fact, I would think it would be, I, would, I always advise my people firsthand. There's nothing beats firsthand experience. So if you want to test drive it, anybody that's listening to this call or is going to hear the replay, I'll just carte blanche offer. If you would like to test drive the assessment, I would love to provide that opportunity to you. And I will actually review the results with you. That's when the penny will drop. That's when you'll say, okay, I understand the significance of this and why you've right. been able to quadruple everybody's hiring uh, success rate, okay? So there's, there's no question. There's another thing that I'd like to do, and another one of your great friends and mine too, I've known him for the last decade, his name is Frank Klesitz, okay? So we have partnered together. He has created a program. It is the only other product or service that he has created other than his core viral marketing offer, okay? And it is a recruiting class, a recruiting program, okay? 10 weeks in length. It is, in my opinion, one of the best things out there. When a new broker owner has access to that information and they provide a tremendous amount of value helping you create, you know, from ad copy to landing sites to everything, we are working in partnership together. So he's doing that side of it and I'm doing all of the assessment and videos and so forth on the other side. It is a slam dunk combination partnership. A lot of, um, a lot of what's taught in that course, Frank has shared with me, um, that it came directly from some of the successes that I personally have experienced. So we started a blog a year ago, started inviting people to team trainings a year ago across all brokerage brands, any agent right. in my market, but any agent in the country is welcome to come to all of my trainings. I've always right. had that mindset. It's an abundant mindset, knowing right. that a certain percentage will say, Hey, I want to be a part of this. And they'll ask, Hey, how do I join the team? I'm Absolutely. no longer recruiting. I'm just helping people be the best versions of themselves. And then they say, I want to be a part of it. And John, at that point we would hand them to you. We'd say, Hey, well, I appreciate you wanting to be a part of our team. We have everyone go through a personality assessment with our friend right. John Pike. 
And then right. once they've taken that test, we could have a quick call with you to say, what do you think? What are the results? Absolutely. And that would then become 80% of our hiring decision. 20% would be based on the face-to-face -face interview yes. that we take them through. And I know my team subscribes to the recruit select strategies when it comes right. to that interview, what questions to ask. Um, sure. And then the experience, once we know we want to bring someone in, we want them to know what they're signing up for. I think mm -hmm. a big disconnection with hiring new people is that they have no idea really what they're signing up for. They've never seen a team like mine in sure. operation, but they'll come on and join without knowing anything about it. I'd rather not treat them like the traditional broker where you right. just sign the contract and now they're lost in the shuffle. Sure. I want them to actually spend a few weeks or months with my team in a probationary state prior to actually getting a full-time offer. That's kind of how we bring people through our pipeline. So what's the best way, if someone wants to test this out and kind of challenge this whole idea, because this is new for a lot of people, sure. a lot of us high Ds have just kind of winged it and yep. have had a lot of success doing that. Um, right. And I, me included, the only test I give someone is a disc, which is pretty simple. It's a right. 20 minute evaluation. And sure. I hire everyone independent of disc results. I really do that to understand sure. how to better communicate with each individual and know how they're wired. Right. So right. what would someone need to do if they say, Hey, you know what, disc me or give me this analysis. If you, if I feel like you nailed it, then yep. maybe I'll want to move forward and use sure. you in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Just the simplest thing to do is just to email me, John at the talent genius.com. Okay. Uh, J O H N at the talent genius.com. I'll send you a link. And, um, and as soon as you fill out the results, boom, instantly you'll get a copy of it. The magic is in the interpretation because it's 70 sure. pieces of information. I can just distill it down to, you know, the four most important pages and the most important information, especially for those high Ds, boom, you're going to have it in 20 minutes or less. Yeah. Right? And what, what I would say to everyone listening, I mean, think <laughs> about the hires that you've had that have just been complete nightmares. I'd say 10% of the people we've brought into our team, we, we shouldn't have brought into the team. I would even admit I knew most of the time we shouldn't have brought them, but you kind of say, ah, whatever, I'm not going to hassle with them every day. It's not sure. going to really impact my life. Yes, it will. Sure. Recruit sure. Select teaches how much money you lose on hiring the wrong person. I know we had talked off air about yep. hiring slow, firing fast. When you know someone's not a good fit, let them go. But right. if you take the extra time and spend a little bit of extra money and mm -hmm. focus on hiring the right people, Obviously, John, you've shared what some of those results look like for your clients. I've experienced yep. the exact same thing. So hire right. slow, fire fast, reach out to John to help with this analysis. Do it for yourself if you haven't done it already. Check out getviral.com to sign up for that recruiting course. It's super inexpensive. Like you said, it's the only other product he's created that creates mm -hmm. revenue and it's pretty right. much, he's not getting rich off of it. He exactly. did it because he has seen that this is a huge need for teams right. across the country is building and scaling. So any final words to our audience members as we wrap up the show today? Two quick things. My newest book is called Hire Fast, Fire Fast. Okay, Hire Slow, Fire Fast is absolutely the wrong methodology. It's kind of the sacred cow today, right? People drag their feet and say, call it being selective. When you have the power of this assessment behind you, you can move with a significant amount of speed, which is what the high Ds especially like, and you can get them off the market. Now is the, the, the most difficult, challenging time when it comes to talent since the lowest unemployment rate since the 1960s. Quick example, I, gave, uh, I just hired two people. They started yesterday. From the time that we actually, they submitted their application to the time that they started was one week. We knew 80%, these people are rock stars. We wanna get them off the market. They went on their uh, first day, shadow day yesterday, and, and basically they're starting immediately. So you can, you don't have to wait, okay? You can have people that, uh, they're in an interview process of maybe five or six different companies, but they drag it out five, six, seven weeks to jump through all these hoops. No, if someone's phenomenal, you, you'll know it and you wanna right. reach out to them and quickly get them on your team. Secondly, onboarding. When you have the power of these assessments and these analytics, you can say, okay, we, what we do is we create a one-page executive summary, how to best communicate with them based on their disk profile, how to create the ideal work environment, what motivates them and their talents. When we, do, when we do it that way, so Jeff, here's what it really looks like quickly. Jeff, we're thrilled that you've joined our team. We know more about you than you know about you. Your scores all ranked in the top 10%, the best salespeople in the country. Not a matter of if you're gonna be successful, but how successful. We know this about you. You're a high D. We're gonna treat you with a lot of, um, we're gonna basically tell you what you need to know and that's it. We're not gonna tell you, you know, how to build the watch. We're gonna tell you what time it is. We're gonna liberate you and free you up to do what you do best, which is to sell. We're gonna compensate you very fairly based on, you know, on what you're gonna contribute. You're gonna make more money here than, you know, than anywhere else for these reasons, et cetera. We know from a research point of view, when you onboard somebody this way, you have a 70% increase in retention and more than a 70% increase in their actual productivity. 
how awesome is it for a new hire to have this type of conversation with their lead, with their leader, with their manager who says, well, you can't imagine how thrilled we are that you're here, right? It's not a matter of if you're going to succeed, but how successful you're going to be because we know that you have the sales DNA, sure. you know, to be able to absolutely crush it. So those are two awesome. really key important final thoughts. Awesome. Well, appreciate that, John. Thank you for the interview today. You guys uh, feel free to reach out to John. If you have an opportunity, go out to iTunes and thank him for this, this time that he has spent with us and for the free book. That's the first time anyone's ever given a book away for free to all of our audience members. So that's pretty awesome on PDF. Um, yep, and like I said, please go out to iTunes, give us a five-star rating on that. And then I know I have a lot of audience members asking about upcoming events. We are hosting a workshop in Omaha the first week in August. Go to EliteRealEstateSystems.com. Click on workshop or click on events to find out more information about that. It's going to be a full day event for $97 a person. That includes lunch. That includes a, a coffee break in the afternoon, a little Starbucks run, um, and a lot of other extras that we normally wouldn't give away for $97. Our events are $3,000 to come out to one of our workshops. And it's steeply discounted because we're running it in conjunction with another event that's going on at the same time. Um, that my broker is hosting at my office. So you don't want to miss out. If you can make it to home on August, that's going to be a great opportunity uh, to connect with me and my team. And then we will have future events on the calendar here in the next couple of weeks um, for workshops in September, October, and November. So stay tuned. You can check out our website for that, EliteRealEstateSystems.com. Also, if you just always jump on iTunes, but you'd like this episode and future episodes emailed to you, you can sign up to be emailed every time we release a new podcast. You just go out to EliteRealEstateSystems.com slash podcast. And just put your email address in and we'll send you an email with a little write-up about each, each uh, episode so you can get an idea of what's covered and then the time in which those topics are covered just in case you don't have the full 20 or 30 minutes to listen to the entire show. John, thank you again. Great content. I know you gave a lot of people a lot of awesome ideas and I definitely will be using you to not only assess myself, um, I want to hear how I do from a narcissistic standpoint. I'm excited sure. to hear that. And right. then of course, I'd like to start taking my staff and agents through that same process and I would love to see um, how that all works. So thank you again Absolutely. for coming on. I look forward to working with you. My pleasure. Likewise. Take care. All right. You too. Bye-bye. Bye now.